So I wanted to make a video here. I wanted to talk about a couple things. I want to talk about transistors. And we could talk about people who claim to have superhuman powers. And how the two really don't go together. So I got these two transistors here. And uh, I'd like you guys just to look at these two. And could you do me a favor? Could you tell me, just with your eyes, which one of these is good and which one's bad? Which transistor still works and which one doesn't work? Now, you can only use your eyeballs to tell that. Come on, you can do it. There's guys out here on the internet that claim to be able to look at transistors and pop the tops on them and tell you how good or bad or tell you something about them. Now, of course, these guys who make these claims to have that superpower have never sat through an electronics class in their entire life, and they sure as hell haven't done anything uh, as far as uh, designing transistors. I don't think that they've ever even had a job that deals with electricity, let alone electronics. But they're going to tell you that they can look at something and, and tell you all about it. Especially after, you know, what they just showed up out of nowhere for the last few years, just getting into it. But you guys, you all know better than that. You're not going to let people like that play you for an idiot, because that's what they're trying to do. They're playing you for an idiot by telling you things like that, because they think you're going to believe them. They think you're going to believe that they can magically tell the chemical composition of a wafer with their eyeballs. They're going to play for a fool thinking that they can magically look at a, a dye and tell how long it was spent in the grow process. They're going to try and trick you left and right into thinking that the way a transistor is put together differently than another transistor makes some special difference. Yet they could not give you a single shred of actual technical data to back that up. Now, let's get back to these two transistors. Have you guys figured out which one's good or bad? Well, I wasn't able to either. I actually had to hook them up to a meter. And I was able to tell with a meter, and the one that I put the X on, that's a bad one. The other one, that works fine. But I had to use a meter. My eyeballs just couldn't tell me which one was good and bad. So let's go look at some transistors here for a minute and, and see what we got. We got a couple RFT PP100s. These are from two different lots, the 15X and the 16X. And you look at them, I mean, they're pretty much the same thing. Now, one of the things people talk about also is the construction of transistors. Now, they're going to tell you that some transistor designs, they've got the one big chip. It's better than having the four chips and stuff like that. Well, here's what that all comes down to. First off, those people are full of shit and they don't know what they're talking about. Second off, when a lot of these transistors were originally being designed, let's talk about Motorola and Toshiba in particular, they couldn't just pick up the phone and buy a piece of machinery to stitch weld the die onto a uh, onto a package like this. Those companies had teams of engineers that their job was to design machinery to build the products that other teams of engineers designed and developed. And they did everything in-house. They had to build their own machinery, everything. So the products that they made were unique to anyone else in the world. But now you fast forward 20, 30, 40 years, and you can pick up a telephone and order a machine nowadays. And that's really what companies do. Because the machine that stitch welds these together, that doesn't make a big of a difference. What makes the difference is how that chip, how that die is grown. And that's what it is, it's grown. How it's bombarded with different ions, different gases. That's what determines how special this chip and that chip and any chip is. Not how it's put together with four chips or one chip or two chips. It's what that chip is. So don't let these fools trick you into thinking that there's something special about it. 
So let's move on. Let's look at a few more transistors here, and you guys will get the, uh, you'll be able to make these decisions yourself in a minute. You don't have to take my word for it. You'll, you'll see for yourself here. So let's see what else we got. Ah, we got some Toshiba's, 2879's, red dot, non-red dot. Now, we all know or we've all heard, you know, that they're the same. The only difference is, is that the insulating wafer uh, was made out of a different material, a non-carcinogenic. Well, there they are. And you can see they're the same. Well, except the one on the right took a nice high voltage hit. Oops. Uh, you can see where it arced and blew the transistor out, but otherwise they are the same. Built on the same machines, same assembly line, same, 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 same. Proprietary machinery. They're the only ones that are going to look like this because that's their machinery. You can't buy the Toshi Toshiba's transistor machine. Let's see what else we got here. Now these are 100 watt transistors, remember. 2879's 100 watt transistors. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, look at that one. Well, that's got a little tiny chip on it. What is that? Maybe like a, uh, that's less than half? Ah, we'll just call it half. We'll say it's half of that one. It looks like half of the Toshiba, right? There's the Toshibas. That transistor looks like it's half of it. So what's that, a 50 watt transistor? Ooh, no, it's not. I guess my eyeballs were wrong. Yeah, I guess I can't tell just by looking at it. That's an SRF 3749, which in case anybody's wondering, is a high-gain, high-performance MRF 454. So that we'll call it, it's an 80-watt transistor, but they kind of say it's an 80-watt plus because of the high gain. But we'll just call it an 80-watt transistor. But yet, look at it. It's half the die. Well, my eyes say it should be half, but it's not. And again, this here transistor, this is made on special proprietary machinery owned by Motorola. You can't get your hands on that. So let's see, we got the 100 watt on the left, we got the 80 watt on the right. Let's see what's going on. Oh look, here's another one. Look at that. Well that's what got a big die on it. So let's see, 100 watt, 80 watt, that's got to be 100 watt also. That's what my eyeball tells me because you know that there's people that can look at transistors and tell you all about them. Yep, that looks like 100 watt to me. And, oh shit, I was wrong again. That's a 250 watt transistor. But my eyeballs said, oh look, look, look. That's because your eyes just can't tell what that chip is really made of. They can't tell. That's what makes a transistor special, is the chip. Not how many of them, not how they're soldered in there. It's what is in that chip, how it is bombarded, how it is grown. Your eyes cannot tell that. So don't let these guys come out here and sucker you into thinking they can. Because if they could look at this and tell what it is, that would mean every piece of test machinery on the face of the earth can be thrown in the garbage can. These guys would be able to name their price. It would be the richest people in the universe because their eyeballs would do what billions and trillions of dollars worth of test machinery is used to do nowadays. So don't believe them. They're lying to you. MRF 448, 250 watt, 80 watt, 100 watt. <laughs> Look at the sizes. Well, let's go on. Let's go on. I got some more transistors. I just wanted to kind of. I dug through my junk box and pulled out some pills and started pulling them apart and let's see what we got. Well, we got a 2SC2879 by uh, HG Semi here. And this is from lot 10-23. And here's another one. And this here is from lot 13Q1. Both of them 2SC2879s built by the same company. But wait a second, it looks like they redid their internal design at some point. You can see in the beginning they were using two chips, and now they're using four. And they got that little, I don't know what this is, some sort of bar across the top here. But you can see they're both the same part number, and they both did pretty much the same power. 
but they got completely different internal design. Well, that's because these chips are different than those chips. Again, your eyeball can't tell that. It can't tell you how powerful it is. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, here we go, ASI. Now, I actually was kind of impressed by this transistor. It did really good power. Um, it was similar to the uh, Toshiba and uh, similar to the PP100s. It actually did pretty good. Oh, look at the size of that chip. Holy cow. That really blew my mind when I popped the top off of this one. I said, God, you know, look at the size of that thing. I would have never thought that. I would have thought it was a much larger chip or multiple chips, but that's because what this is made out of, your eyes can't tell. They have their own process, and that's what size the chip needs to be to make the power. Let's see what else we got. Oh, okay, we're getting into DEIs here. So we got a 13, uh, a lot 13 2Q, a 14 1Q, 2Q, and 3Q. Now I can tell you 13 series and 14 series, you don't want to put them in the same uh, circuit next to each other. They will tend to, uh, to not like each other. They don't like working together. Although the 14s, you can put them all together uh, as long as the gain is matched. Uh, otherwise, 13s and 14s don't like to work together. Well, let's take a look. Well, they look the same, except, uh, you know, I busted the, uh, the pedal off that one, sorry, when I was taking it apart. But, you know, they all look the same. Look at that. You know, and there's that bar they got across the top of them on the DEIs. Oh, and that's something else I've heard, uh, you know, fools that talk without knowing anything. <laughs> They, uh, they were saying, somebody said something about, uh, you know, the power pills or DEIs with a different label on them. Well, uh, look at the way these are made, okay? You see the way they're made? Uh, yeah. They're made differently. Hmm. But that's because the people that say that stuff, they're just, they're shit talkers. They got nothing better to do except lie, you know. But that's how they get their, uh, that's how they get attention. Look, here I am talking about them. They got their 15 seconds of fame because they're a liar. All right, let's go back over here. We're at the DEIs. So you see the four different DEIs. They do, they look the same. But I can tell you between those two series, now there is a little bit of color difference, but... You know, some of that also is because when they got burned out and I've tortured these. So I can't say that that's the color they're supposed to be or not. But they definitely look the same otherwise. But that's all my eyes can tell you. Can't tell you anything else. Let's look, see what else we got here. Um, all right, here's one that I, I think this came out of an old varmint amplifier. I don't really know what it is. I just happened to rip it open for the hell of it. But look at the size of the little die on this guy. And this is a, a small package. And what do we got here? Okay, here's a Power Pill 60, which is the replacement for the 1446. You can see that's got two chips in it. And uh, we got the PP70, which is a in between a 1446 and a 2290. So it's in between the 60 and the 80. Two chips, just a little bit bigger, bigger package for better heat dissipation. Uh, this one, when they made them for me, they did, it does have that bar on there, which was the only transistor they did that to. Weird. But that's because they got the same machinery. Everybody's got the same machinery. You pick up the phone and order it. It's the chips that make the difference. All right, PP80. Got three chips in that one. Okay, this is cool. Here we got the Toshiba 2SC 2290s. We have a red dot and non-red dot. I'm sure everybody has heard how the older non-red dot would perform better. They worked better than the newer red dot. And until I popped the tops on these two, I just kind of took it for granted that maybe, I don't know, I just took it for granted. Well, look at this. They're made completely the opposite of each other. That is weird. I, I don't know how to explain that. 
the chips look the same, but they look like they're kind of built opposite each other. Maybe that's why they work differently. Maybe it's the chip. I don't know. I am not a transistor design engineer. My eyeballs cannot do that. Only these guys that get out here on the internet with their special bionic eyes that claim they can look inside a transistor, pop the top off it, and tell you something about it. I'm sure they could tell you why. Me, I can't. It just, But it's bizarre. What else we got here? Oh, here's the DEI 2290. And that's uh, using three chips. What else? So, yeah. I guess that's about it. That kind of wraps it up. You know, but as you look at the different um, transistor types and what they have in them, you can see that by looking at the guts of them, you really can't tell anything. You know, you can tell they're made differently, but can't tell what they're made out of, how much power they're going to do. So be careful when these guys get out there and they try and trick you. They're just trying to get that little extra out of your pocket and into theirs. And that right there, these three transistors really sum it all up. The 2879, the 20, or 3749, and the 448. Look at the chip differences and know that we have a 100 watt, an 80 watt, and a 250 watt. And just look at, there's no rhyme or reason that your eyeball can identify. Remember, that little bit extra that they're gonna try and get out of your pocket and put into theirs, it's not gonna get you anything. Well, it's going to get your pocket a little extra lighter. <laughs> but there it is. Transistors. Can't judge a book by its cover. And damn, when you crack the cover on it, you still can't tell the book. The only way you're going to tell what these things can really do is with meters and testing. Don't let them fool you. There's wolves amongst us. They're going to try and drag you into the deep water and fool you into thinking they know something that you don't. Common sense shows you right here they're full of shit. You all have a great day. Yep. We got it. And I'll see you. Bump, bump.